something with you tonight, and I'm going to read uh, out of 1 Samuel chapter 15. He's, uh, it's um, Samuel talking here to Saul in verse 18. It says, Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. The word there means exterminated. Okay? Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoils and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, but I've obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. And I brought back Agag, the king of the Amalek Amaleks. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Apparently not. But the people took of the plunder, the sheep, the oxen, the best of things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. So Samuel, now listen to this. You, you ready? Listen to this. This is important. So Samuel said, has the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? as obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed then the fat of the rams. Now, here's the next verse. Listen to verse 23. Listen to this. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. God is looking for obedience. Listen to me. He wants us to obey him. He wants us to obey the Holy Spirit. He wants us to obey His Word. He wants obedience in our life. Now, you better be careful about saying amen because you might find out you hadn't been as obedient as you thought. But the Bible says that bottom line, that, um, that Saul was stubborn and he was an idolater. Right before he did this, he went and built a big altar to himself. You say, oh, I would never be anything like that. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe not you, but you might know somebody. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 19 says this. And I'm going to back up and let me just explain something to you. God is warning the children of Israel about the blessings that he has promised them, and we're going to look at that in a little bit, and the curses if you don't. Okay? The blessings if you obey, the curses if you don't. Okay? So listen to me. And he was warning them, and he said, I want, he said let, me, let me back up to verse 18. It says, so there may be, Deuteronomy 29, 18, so that there may not be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose hearts turn away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of the nations and that there, be not, there may not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. That's rebellion. Iniquity and rebellion. Bitterness is iniquity. All right, now listen. And so it may happen when he or whoever, now listen to this, hears the words of this curse that he just gave them, that he blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace even though I follow the, uh, even though I follow the dictates of my heart as though the drunkard could be included with the sober. 
He said, I, I know that there's a curse but I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do and I'm going to be blessed anyway. I'm going to have peace anyway. Do you know that's where a lot of the body of Christ is right now? They're doing what they want to do and it doesn't matter about any consequences. Now, we're not under the curse of the law. Don't misunderstand me. But then they say, I'm going to be blessed no matter what. Even though I go after the, my, the, my, the purposes of my own heart, I'm still going to be blessed in all that I do. Well, that's not what the Word says. Listen to the Amplified. I shall have peace and safety though I walk in the stubbornness of my mind and heart. And he compares it to the drunk and the sober. Okay? So, so listen to me. You have to be careful about what you say about your life and your obedience to what the Lord has for your life. Because there is an obedience to the faith. I can't get into all of it tonight, but I am, and I'm not going to tell you when, so you, 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 so, you know, I'll sneak up on you. But it's, it says here that people do that like, that like a drunkard saying they're sober. Now, I can identify with that. Because I never thought anybody ever thought I was drunk. I did some of the most stupid, foolish things you could ever imagine. I'm I would be embarrassed to tell you some of the stupid things I did. And thought nobody knew I was drunk when I did that. Nobody knew I was drunk. But they did. It was the foolishness of my heart. But you know, there are a lot of people that, that go around doing whatever they want to do, calling themselves Christians, calling, calling themselves living for God, and they're just drunkards thinking they're, everybody thinks they're sober. Well, everybody knows what you're doing. I know I'm not talking to anybody here, but, but just so you know. So, so listen. Be careful that you hear what I'm saying tonight. We're not under the curse. Just because you miss something doesn't mean that the curse is going to fall on you. But listen to me. When you don't live the gospel life, there are consequences. There's a devil out there. There's a world out there that, that does not want your testimony. Okay. So... It's better to be obedient than to be stubborn in your heart and rebellious and think you can act like somebody that's drunk and nobody will know it. Everybody still with me? Okay. Obedience is important. It's critical for your life that you understand obedience is better than sacrifice. Thank you for your enthusiasm, okay? Obedience, the definition for obedience is compliance, submission, listening attentively. Did you know that's one of the definitions for obedience? How many of you have ever looked at your kids in the face and said, look at me and listen to me? I know. It's part of obedience. It's part of the definition. It means to heed or conform to a command. So there's a lot more involved with our Christian life, I think, that sometimes we, we want to, as my, <clears throat> well, I'm a, as, as we want to allow, if you understand that. It's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. The good news is Jesus came to break the curse of disobedience. Isn't that good? He became a curse for us. Let me read you a couple of scriptures. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, who was that? One man sin entered into the world, who was that? Okay, thank you. I just want to see if anybody knows anything about the Bible tonight. 
Somebody said Jesus. <laughs> and death through sin, thus death spread to all men because all sinned. All right, now listen to verse 19. I'm not going to read all this. I want you just to get this real quick. Listen, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Who is that? Thank you, Lord. That's Jesus. Verse 21 says, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus, because of his obedience, broke the back of the curse. But he did not release you and I from obedience. It's better to obey than it is to sacrifice. So let, let me just show you this, and I think it's going to help you. So hang with me. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. This is very familiar territory, okay? The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in, that, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, the devil said, well, you're not going to die. But that word there actually means in dying, die. In other words, you're going to die physically now then. And once you die physically, you will die spiritually. You will lose your contact with me, which is what happened. Okay. So, so listen to what it says. And the Lord God, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let me back up here. I don't want to, okay, let, let me just, yeah. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil you should not eat, for in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. So God gave him everything but one thing. Everything but one thing. The reason the Lord did that, now listen to me, it's important because it's relevant to us today, is because He wants you to choose. He told the children of Israel, I said before you this day, blessing and curses, therefore choose. Somehow we've gotten the idea that it's not our choice, but God gave us choice. He gave us Choice. That's why he set something in there and said, okay, you can obey me. All this is yours. Don't do this because if you do, you're disobedient. Isn't that what we read? He was disobedient. Everybody still with me? Okay. So he did that to establish a covenant with man. And I'm going to say it like this, a free will covenant. Where your will gets to choose. Your will gets to decide. God didn't create robots. God's not playing with a bunch of ants getting you to move here and there and playing around with you. You have a choice. You have choices. All right, so just, just stick with me and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Well, you know what happened, right? Man transgressed in the garden. Okay, And when the man transgressed in the garden, in verse 14 of chapter 3, the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this, you're cursed. More than the cattle, more than the beast, you'll, fly on, you'll crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. In verse 15, and I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Do you hear that, Becky? Okay. <laughs> then, Adam, then Adam, then he said to Adam, because you, now listen to this, have 
I want you to listen to this. Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake and toil you'll eat of it all the days of your life. There was a curse. Y'all still with me? You've, it, so, so a curse came on the earth. Everybody understand that? It says in verse 18, thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth and you'll eat the herbs of the field. In sweat of your face, you'll eat bread till you return to the ground. From out of which you were taken, dust you are and to dust you'll return. Boom, everything changed because of one man's disobedience. He had everything but one thing. Why? Because God wanted him to be in his image and to be able to choose. God did not create us to be robots. He gave us the ability to obey, do right, disobey, do wrong. We can follow the will of God and obey God, or we can do what we want to do. But I want you to listen to me today. My, my point in this is not to try to sh scare you. It's to, so you can examine your life. So down the road now, we go down the road, and now God wants to make a covenant with Israel. So in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, he said this. He said, it shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you. What, is it, what do they have to do? Obey. obey. That the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. And blessings will come upon you. Okay? All right? Everybody got that? But, now listen, then he added to it in verse 15. And I love my, my, my Bible. The heading of this portion of the scripture is the curse on disobedience. That's exactly what it is. Listen, verse 15. It shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, do observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you to say, that all these commandments, Curses will come upon you and overtake you. So you got a choice. You can obey and be blessed. You can disobey and the curses come on you. And they were rough. I mean, you, need, you, you, you ought to go read them. The main reason I read them is because Jesus redeemed me from them. Amen. So here's the covenant that God made. Leviticus 26 says this in verse 14. If you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, and if you despise my statute, charge if your soul abhors my judgments so that you do not perform all commandments but break my commandments, I will also do this to you. And I don't want to go into it. The point is God gave them obedience and disobedience. And then we read in, verse, in chapter 29, he warned them about thinking you can bypass the obedience part and do what you want to do. Okay, just stick with me. So here's the great thing about this. Jesus delivered us from the curse of all this disobedience. In other words, it's not automatic, but listen to me. If you are not obedient to the faith, then you're just like the rest of the world and you receive what the world receives. Well, I'm a Christian. I know, but you're not living in obedience. I'm not trying to scare you. Well, I, am I out of, if I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not being obedient. Well, do you think you are? Well, I know I am. Well, there you go. But if you don't know anything, don't fret about it. The Lord will show you. So I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to get you to understand the Lord is looking for obedience in our life. And I'm, I'm going to show you. It's in the New Testament. I know you're glad of that. Okay. So let me read you a, a couple of scriptures. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. 
talking about Jesus, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, now listen, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. He became obedient all the way to death. That means he could have been disobedient. Let me read you another scripture, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Though he was a son, talking about Jesus, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, listen to me. Suffering did not teach him obedience. We know he had to suffer. Okay, Jesus was already obedient. He said, I only do what I hear and see the Father do. I'm always, I'm, I'm already obedient. He wasn't learning from his suffering. He was in submission to it in order to do what he needed to do, which die the death of the cross. You remember Gethsemane? Gethsemane was a, the point of obedience or disobedience. It was, the, it was the point of obedience, disobedience. Lord, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. But if not, I'm submitting to your will, I'm being obedient to your will. I am obeying. He broke that curse of obedience off of our lives where it wasn't a blessing and a curse. And if you did one thing wrong, you received the curse. He broke that yoke off of our lives because he literally submitted himself to suffering. The Bible says here that he learned it's interesting if you listen to the way it says this. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. The, that word there actually means uh, he was he learned or he was accustomed to suffering. He another translation says that uh, that he acquired the habit of obedience. See, Jesus was an obedient person. Suffering didn't teach him how to obey. Listen, if suffering is a good example of teaching obedience, it has fallen short with God. I know people, I've heard them say, well, you know, uh, God put this on me and, and I'm just suffering, but I know it's for a purpose. Well, call me when you find out what it is. Because I don't think God would do that and not tell you the purpose. Jesus knew his purpose. The Bible teaches that there will that, that there are that it is possible in First Peter, I think it is, says, talks about this, that that there there may be some suffering, but it's not suffering the heat of the day, it's suffering because of the name of Jesus. It's suffering because of the gospel. Paul suffered. But it wasn't so he could learn something. It was because he was teaching something, preaching something. Suffering wasn't the teacher. The will of God was the teacher. You got to hear that, okay? And he was in submission to the suffering because it was the will of God. Everybody got that? Okay. Because he already knew how to obey. I'm glad that he did suffer because if he hadn't suffered and been obedient all the way to the end, then we would not have had the fullness of what we have today. Because of his suffering, I can come before his throne because he's touched with the feelings of my infirmities because he's already suffered. He's already borne that. He's already carried that himself. Everybody still here? Okay. So the Old Testament and the New Testament obedience is different. But it's still there. And you just, you're going to have to follow me. Okay, listen. It's still there. Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah 31, verse 33. He said, this is the covenant 
that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind, now listen to this, and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. We obey differently now. We still obey, but we obey differently now. We obey now from the heart. Y'all still here? You understand the, the ultimate freedom that God has given us? I'm asking you to obey me from the heart. I'm asking you to listen to me. Obey me and, 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 and operate based on what I've put in your heart, what I've done for you. But obedience is still part of it. Romans chapter 1, verse 5 says this, and I'm going to talk about this at another time, but it says, Through him we have received grace and apostleship. Now listen, we've received grace for a purpose. For the obedience to the faith among all nations. We've received grace so that we can be obedient by faith. I'm not going to be able to get into all this tonight, but I'm, I'm gonna, I, I want to encourage you just to hang with me because you, you'll, you'll get it before we're finished. We, I'm going to talk about this for several, several weeks. But listen, the Amplified Bible says that, that Paul came to promote obedience to the faith and make disciples for his namesake among all nations. Do you know what that means, obedience to the faith? That means whatever the faith of Christ that has been given us says we do. We're obedient to it. To the best of our ability, we're obedient to the word that Jesus left us. That's the faith. We, we operate by faith, but that's the faith that we live in. That's how we live our lives. Okay? So it's interesting that, that faith always starts with the heart. With the heart, man believes. See, it's one thing to tell me what you believe. It's another thing to be obedient to it. Thank God we've got grace and God works with us if we're willing. But there is an obedience that we have to walk in. Because listen to what it says in Romans chapter 6, verse 16. He's talking to Christians here, okay? Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey? You still here? Whether of sin that leads to death or of obedience that leads to righteousness. There it is in the New Testament. There's obedience. There's responsibility on our parts. We are to obey to do what's right. That's what righteousness is. Right. The Bible says, he that is righteous does righteously. In other words, God has conferred on you righteousness, and then he says, now act like it. Be righteous. Walk upright. Are you going to be perfect at it? No, that's where his grace comes in. But listen to me. You're fooling yourself if you think you don't have to obey. Because it says here, listen, that whoever you obey, that's who you're in bondage to. Let me read. This is an older translation that I, I pull out every once in a while because I just like the way it says stuff. It's the Williams translation. I don't think it's in print anymore, but listen to this. Do you not know that when you habitually offer yourself to anyone for obedience to him, you are slaves to that one whom you are in the habit of obeying? 
whether it is slavery to sin, whose end is death, or obedience, whose end is right doing. We're the right doing people. We're the obeying people. We, we don't want to be those that are slaves to other things. And I'd mention some of them, then you'd be happy if I didn't tell you, mention your problem. But we, if anything that you start obeying, contrary to the gospel, you become a slave to it. He's talking to Christians. So you have to be careful how you deal with your flesh. You have to be careful how you deal with your mind Amen. and your, your, your actions and the way you live your life. There is an obedience to the faith. Now see, if you're not careful, and, and there are groups of people that have done this, is they've, they've developed their own, their own law, New Testament law. And you know, you can make the law out of the New Testament. And they've got everything scheduled out. You can do this, you can't do that. I mean, so far as to, to say you can't even drive cars. Then there's the other bunch, and Becky and I used to preach up in Kansas when, when uh, I first started ministering, and, and there was a group of, um, of, I believe they were Christians, and they were called Black Bumper Christians. They didn't believe in chrome because it was too shiny and gaudy, and it didn't give glory to God, so they'd paint their chrome bumpers black. <laughs> Becky, tell you, it's, it's the truth. So you can make all kinds of rules and just make another law, but God doesn't want you to do this because of a written law. He wants you to obey from the heart. Because you, He saved you. He's delivered you. He doesn't want you to get back into sin. He doesn't want you to get habitually into things that you have no business in. He wants you free of that. We want you free. That's why we do these freedom classes. That's why we believe, we want to believe with you to be free. Only you know what that is. But you've got to understand that if you don't get in the habit of obeying God and obeying the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit working in your life, you're going to have issues because you've put yourself back over in a, in a place of bondage. You can justify it and say, well, but God's grace is there. God, it is. Thank God for his grace. But listen to me. You're a slave to whatever you obey. Amen. We, we have a lady in our church who wrote me a letter a while back, and it just blew my mind. I mean, I read it, and I, I, I just got tears in my eyes. It just overwhelmed me. She's a faithful member of the church, and she's, when she first started coming, she was an alcoholic. She'd come to she would come to church drunk. She said nobody even knew it, but I was drunk. I mean, it was an astounding letter. I mean, I was, I'm thinking, I saw this lady in church. I saw her singing. I saw her lifting her hands. And she'd go home and get, if she wasn't home, at drunk at, at church, she'd go home and get drunk. Was she going to hell? No, I'm not talking about heaven or hell. I'm talking about living an obedient life. It's so much better. And finally, God touched her and she realized, I've been a slave to this. And God broke it off of her life. I, I'm going to try to get her to tell her testimony sometime, or at least let me read that letter. I mean, it's, it was just amazing. But see, you've got to be careful what you're obeying. Because if you come to church, which you do on Wednesday night, you know. There's stuff you know. You're not like a baby Christian. You know, God gives a lot of grace to baby Christians. Now, I'm going to tell on Becky, but I know you're not going to believe this is true, but, but, but uh, when I got saved and she got back in fellowship with the Lord, she smoked. And uh, she kept smoking. 
Can you believe that? I, I can't even believe you did that. <laughs> I mean, really, I, I think about giving that testimony, and I'm thinking, no, she didn't really do that, but she did. And, you know, she wasn't like she was a three-pack-a-day person, but, you know, she did. And, she, and, and we started getting a hold of the Word of God, and, and um, she had allergies really, really bad. I mean, I used to have to give her shots for, for allergies. It, I mean, really bad. And she got a hold of the Word and was believing God for healing. And one day the Lord spoke to her and said, uh, you're believing me for healing, and you're still smoking these cigarettes. Well, guess what she did? She quit. She obeyed God. She obeyed what God was saying. She needed healing in her body. And so she quit and went and got a cat. And she was allergic to cats. And then the devil told her she wasn't healed. She went and got another cat. I would have been much happier with a dog myself. But, <laughs> but, but listen, God healed her. This obedience that I'm talking about is for your own good. It's for your own, it's your own good. It, it's amazing what it'll do if you'll, just, if you'll just let God work in your life and, and be obedient to the gospel, be obedient to the word of God, be obedient to the spirit of God. Let me read you this scripture out of the Amplified Bible, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. This will help you with this. Listen to this. Amplified Bible says it this way. Live as children of obedience to God. Do not conform yourself to evil desires that governed you in the past in your former ignorance when you did not know, now listen to this, the requirements of the gospel. Isn't that interesting? People want to be free. Well, there are requirements. <laughs> you know, I think there are people, I don't believe it would be you, but there are people who would sit here and say, oh, I don't, I'm under grace. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah, you're drunk. You don't even think anybody knows it. <laughs> Listen to it again. Live as children of obedience to God. Do not conform yourself. One of the definitions of conform is obedience. Conform yourself to evil desires that governed you in your former ignorance when you did not know the requirements of the gospel. He wants us to be obedient children. Everybody still with me? You say, well, pastor, uh, how, how, how does that work? Well, let me read you another scripture in Hebrews chapter 12. It's talking about chastening or chast chastisement. Now, I'm not going to get into detail with this because my time's almost gone. But, but listen, it says in verse 9, Further, we had human fathers who corrected us. Now, I don't know about your father, but my father corrected me with a belt. And I could hear it coming out of the loops <laughs> when he took it off. Now, I, look, I'm not... I, I had somebody get upset with me about talking about that. Listen, I'm not, I'm not saying that's right for everybody. And it's not right for every child. I beat Lindsay till she was black and blue. <laughs> she'd come for, she, I'd be spanking her for one spanking and have to spank her three times for being disobedient so I could spank her the first time. <laughs> she'd get, usually get at least two or three spankings. I don't remember spanking Laney but one time. Because <laughs> Laney was obedient. <laughs> Lindsay was another story. <laughs> she turned out all right. Amen. 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 She turned out all right. 
So it says we had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Excuse me, you didn't hear that. You were talking. <laughs> and we paid them respect. Okay. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection, in obedience to the Father of spirits and live? Now, here's the difference. He is the Father of our spirits. He is not dealing with our flesh. He's dealing with our spirits. And in order to, be a, to allow him to deal with your spirit, you have to be in subjection. You have to be submitted. You have to obey. He's the father of our spirits. Well, you know, God will beat you. No, God's not beating us. He's the father of our spirit. I can tell you what, I, some of the things that the Lord spoke to me I'd rather take a beating than have him say what he said. I mean, there have been a couple of times in my life where he spoke some things to me that ripped my guts out because I knew I was wrong. I knew I, it wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't obeying. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. And, and I, I would have rather taken a beating. He's the father of our spirits. And so we obey from the Spirit. Now look, not just the Spirit of God, but the Word's pretty clear. We, we can obey the, the Word, but I'm going to tell you, listen to me. Even the Word can become a law. I, I could preach to you the law of the Word, but the Bible says the letter of the law kills, but the Spirit of the law brings life. I, I'll just use this as an example. We had, a, uh, this was many, many years ago now, but we had a lady come to our church, very nice looking young lady, and she was very inappropriately dressed. And I'm not even going to describe it. Let's just say she was very inappropriate. I mean, visible inappropriate dress. And she said, right here. <laughs> right here. And I had people saying to me, well, you need to go talk to her. I mean, you know, she could be, you know, that could tempt somebody. And uh, you can tempt somebody with a, with a, a hazmat suit on <laughs> if, if the circumstances are right. Okay. And I, and I thought about saying something to her or at least having Becky go say something to her. You know, I mean, we talked about it. And the Lord spoke to me just as clear as a bell and said, leave her alone, I'll take care of it. And I want to tell you, it was such a joy watching that transformation. You know why? Because the Spirit of God did it. And she obeyed what the Holy Spirit was telling her rather than somebody coming up to her and saying, hey, you better cover up, you know. Because that changed her life. It changed her. It changed the whole dynamic, dynamic of her life. There was no guilt. There was no condemnation. Why? Because she just obeyed what the Lord said. I didn't get up and pre preach about it. The Holy Spirit did it. That's the way God wants us to work. We, he wants us to submit. Lord, your will, not mine. Lord, what do you want me to do? And, and listen, let me just say something else. Paul made this statement. He said, uh, all things are legal, but not all things are profitable. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to be careful about something. Is this really going to be profitable for me? Is this going to be valuable? Should I do this? Is this something I should do or Whatever, it could be a million things. Because I've actually had the Lord tell me, don't do things that I really want to do. And I've had him tell me, you can do that when I was surprised that he did. Yeah. 
It's, it's a matter of obeying from the heart and obeying the Word of God as it as it's, comes alive to you. If you don't ever read the Bible, you, you, you're hiding from Him. If you don't read your Bible, you're hiding from God. You want somebody else to tell you what God's saying? Read the Bible. Amen? So He's the Father of spirits, and we obey the Father of spirits from the Spirit. That's what God wants for our lives. It says in verse 14 of Romans 8, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Not those that get beaten, car wrecks and fall off buildings and run into the wall or whatever you want to. No. That's not what it says. Those that are led by the Spirit. All right. Now listen to what verse 15 of 1 Peter says, and I'll be through. Listen, let me just remind you, verse 14 says, as obedient children, right? And, and don't do like you used to do in your former ignorance, okay? Listen to what the, 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 um, the next verse says, verse 14, uh, 15. But as, one, as the one who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy, in all your conduct and manner of living. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. This got to do with your conduct. Are you going to do it perfectly? No. I, I just here recently had to go apologize to somebody because I was rude to them. I, you'd think I'd get past that at some point in my life. <laughs> Let me go back to Genesis again. Where we? <laughs> Genesis chapter. <laughs> I mean, I did. I, I was rude to somebody, and it's never, Becky and I were walking, I was getting on the elevator, and I said, well, I shouldn't have done that. And Becky said, nope, you shouldn't have. I said, we went up, we were in a hotel. I went up, she got off, went to the room. I went back down, walked up to the front desk and apologized. Now I could have said, well, next time. But you know what? It didn't happen. But what if the Lord had given me an opportunity to minister to her and I'd been rude to her? I'd rather cover, I, I want to cover that. I don't want to be that way. Because the Bible tells us we're supposed to walk in love. Rudeness is not walking in love. Amen. So it's interesting that it's talking here about being holy in all your conduct and manner of living. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you a list. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I just tell you the truth, I know almost all of you that are here tonight, you listen. I'm not trying to beat anybody over the head or trying to get you to question your salvation or question your lifestyle, but we can all do better. We can all do better. I want to obey from the heart. Jesus was obedient to the death of the cross to give me the freedom to obey the Father of spirits from the heart. And that's where our obedience ought to lie. So that ought to make everything about the faith something we're involved with, we're obedient to. So I want to encourage you tonight. Listen to me. There, if you're not obedient, now again, I'm not trying to be critical. If you're not being obedient, and, and you know that you're not being obedient, you are bound up. The good news is Jesus can set you free. But he wants you to be free so you can live for the Father of Spirits. Amen.